Hi, I'm Joe Saunders with Miniature Landscape Hobbies, and in today's episode, we're going to look at a tool that no model painter or miniature builder should be without. An airbrush! Airbrushes, in my opinion, are probably about the most important tool a model builder could have. That is, after they master the basics of using a brush. Now, what I'm not saying is that if you don't have an airbrush now, you're obviously a bad model painter or that you're somehow substandard. But what I am saying is that if you don't have an airbrush, I highly recommend that you at least look into learning about the differences and how they can up your model painting game. If you're totally new to the hobby of painting in miniature, you need to know that an airbrush is no substitute for basic painting skills. Understanding how to use a brush and to work with the proper paint consistency is far more important. In fact, some of my favorite work, such as my scratch-built railway cannon, was done only by brush. No airbrush was involved. Despite this, having an airbrush can improve your work immeasurably. In this video, I'd like to show you some examples of how an airbrush can improve the miniature painting process and up your skills as a model builder. First and foremost, working with an airbrush speeds up the painting process. I think that it could at least triple the speed with which I paint by brush alone. This is of course because spraying the paint is just simply faster than brushing it. The other consideration is that once you get your trigger control down and the paint mix and air pressure just right, you can spray to the desired op opacity extremely quickly. Also, because the paint is aerosolized, it dries fast. With an undercoat, I tend to leave it to dry for half an hour or so to make sure I have a good layer for other coats to stick to. But when you start moving on to layering, the drying time is pretty much negligible. I tend to batch paint models in twos or threes, and by the time I'm done painting a layer on the last one, the first one has set and is ready for the next step. This speed is particularly important if you're a wargamer. Most wargamers are looking for a trade-off between speed and detail to get models on the games table quickly. The airbrush is an ideal solution for this. Most miniature painters work in acrylic paints by layering them darkest to lightest. Usually the painter wants to keep the difference between layers subtle, so they don't really stand out and they blend. Also, afterwards, it's sometimes good to go back with a thinned down paint, somewhere in the mid-tone range, to glaze over the layers and further obscure the transitions. While this can be used to make the model look really good, it's also very time consuming and pretty difficult to master. With airbrushes, layer painting can sometimes be replaced with a technique called color modulation. The result is largely the same, but requires fewer, fewer individual midtones. This is because airbrushes can spray a fine layer of paint that is semi-transparent to the previous layer. If you want your colors to be more vibrant, all you need to do is spray correspondingly more paint as you near the surfaces that catch more light. This way you could conceivably do a well-painted modulation from a dark to light color with three separate passes of an airbrush, where it might take six to eight layers painted by brush. More importantly, the airbrush method will go quicker because of the reduced drying times, and I find the effect can be subtle enough that frequently you can skip the glaze layer. Now, don't get me wrong. Layer painting is so essential to model building that you absolutely need this skill. But if you have a lot of models to do, such as for an army, for a war game, or a large surface to do, such as on a open space of terrain, or if you're doing a larger scale model, then you're gonna wanna make your life easy and use color modulation. 
And for that, you need an airbrush. Airbrushes obviously don't leave brush strokes, so when you apply paint with them, you get an extremely smooth finish. Not only does this look good, it works better to form a foundation for other techniques, which you'll later add with a brush. You've made it this far into the video, so now I'm going to let you in on a little secret. More experienced model painters are usually asked by beginners how they get their work applied so smooth and even on the model? Well, the answer is they really don't. Cameras tend to hide or cover up some of the texture that's on the surface detail of a model, and those brush strokes just don't show. But trust me, they're there. However, if you want to try to do your best to avoid this, yup, use an airbrush. It'll mitigate some of that. One side effect of smooth airbrush layers is that they just dry brush better. If you're like me and work in 1-100 scale, dry brushing frequently is more important than other techniques like layer highlighting. So keeping the edge of a dry brushed area as sharp as possible is crucial. Because of this, having an airbrush on hand can give you a real edge. No pun intended. As an aside, I find you can further enhance this by using a layer of satin varnish airbrushed on first before the dry brush goes over top of it. Lastly, the smooth finish lends itself well to applying decals, which are sometimes called water slide transfers. Getting a decal to sit flat on the model surface is crucial. So crucial that I pretty much gave up on decals a few years ago as I felt they were just too hard to do. And that was even with the help of decal mediums and other products for the task. Instead, I often cut stencils out by hand. Yeah, that sucked. Once I got my first airbrush though, I rediscovered the potential for using transfers on my models. And that of course goes a long way to help establish realism and a sense of scale. And there you have it, my top reasons why you should use an airbrush. Now, I know I've left a lot out. There's a lot of products and supplies specific to using airbrushes. And don't be like me. Remember to buy some airbrush flow improver right off the bat. If you're curious about the airbrush and the products I use, I've put links in the video description. You can go check them out down there. And while you're there, how about you take the link over to my Etsy store? I'd really appreciate any support and any proceeds from any purchases will go to support the channel. So thanks for watching and please remember to subscribe and most importantly, remember to keep building life in miniature.